And now for Marichyasana. Three. Turn it this way. Take two blankets if you normally sit up high uh, for this pose. I'll borrow uh, Brucey's place here. So you don't want to. I'll just take one. Of course, in light on yoga, we strive to go completely down to the floor. And we're, get, we're going there. And if we follow Gita's um, prophecy, it may take one or two lifetimes <laughs> to get down there. Okay, so this is helpful. This movement of the hands cupping inside the knee because it makes for a round rolling action of the knee and the heel coming in very close so the calf and the thigh meet. My heel is close to the bottom thigh, even coming towards the perineum, and I have this turn of the foot. The turn of the foot is important because, remember this presentation, from the ankle to the outer heel, it lifts as opposed to the leg collapsing. You felt you could do some kind of adjustment in Marichasana 1 when I drew it to your attention. So let's start this way. Today we're taking the leg directly out in front. We know at times it's taken asymmetrically off. Let's today go classically with the heel in line with the buttock bone. For Marichyasana <clears throat> one now, three now, I like this, uh, ver this idea to move the knee and all the work you just did here on the outer edge of the foot, forget it for a moment. Come to the inner edge and let the leg cross you. Now, I'm going backward with my trunk. The scalpel tool is there, coming across. On the exhalation, exhalation is to remove inner abdominal pressure. Exhalation is to get thinner in the abdomen and to get more diagonal turning of the abdomen and also how the diaphragm has to move. So I recline, make space. Now I close the space a lot by coming up. Malasana leg, and now I go down. I go down. I go way down with the upper outer arm, and now I sit back. But I sit back with the proper foot action and the leg now in alignment. Now I extend the arm parallel to this back leg. The final position, which we're doing today, is to utilize the back hand to push me again. Now you understand why malasana is so important. I have to get beyond this foot. So I have a chance of having two hands free. Otherwise, it's impossible to do much here. Okay, so now I catch, turn, take the hand behind me, reach it around. If you can't see what's happening, best to come over one more time. Here's my wrist at my inner ankle. Then I find my fingers I might be happy to walk along here. Once I walk along here, at some point, I have to position my hand here, here, or if possible, but you see how I use my hand? You see how I'm turning it to get purchase up? Okay, now that's where I'm going to keep my fingers are held accountable here at this part of my trunk. So now with my exhalation, my arm is free, and I can take it around, and I can hold and find this uh, wrist, okay? And now I can move the knee back to uprightness in the twist. Outer foot descending, hip descending. Does that make sense about where the hand may be positioned? Let's see how we do now. Sit in Dandasana on, the, on this narrowish blanket. Take the fingers behind the knee. Come up. Let the leg hang. So this is specifically something Gita has taught and I have found taking the extra time to do it instead of trudging and bringing the leg in and you're already in this sort of tamasic, earthy element. It is opposed close to the earth. But there has to be this element of lift, of lightness. And you feel the lightness of the leg. It's also continuing in every pose, avoiding future pains. Heyam dukam anagatam means all this action and care, compassion and care for the knee will help you later on with other knee poses. Bring the heel in. Out to the side, catch it, toes angling slightly in. Okay? 
That's where you want to arrive, back on the outer edge of the foot. Now don't overcross the leg past the midline, the heel in line with the buttock, but maybe for broader hips, outer heel to outer hip. Recline back on the left arm, excuse me, your right arm. Now once you recline back, you're making space. You're making space here at the trunk, the root of the thigh, and the thigh itself. Invert the hand, make the scalpel, push across, diagonalize the abdomen, internally the diaphragm, and now exhale, present the outer upper arm. Don't take too long, lift up, and go down with the outer arm. Go lower yet, push the knee slightly over, and inch the arm, the upper tricep low down to the armpit, that's it, Amy, she's getting closer and closer there. Keep it, lower the buttocks onto the blanket, and don't let the arm and leg orientation change. What you're going to improve now is the orientation of your knees are going to the left. Now, adjust the outer heel and bring the knee to the right. In doing so, you are bringing the significant, difficult part of your body in line, which is the right ribs have to follow the left, <clears throat> but importantly, as the knee comes in a line, it's, what is it doing? It's bringing the, right, the left arm in the position, it's bringing the left side trunk, position, almost submission, this has to become passive and compliant to move around. Okay, now extend the arm straight out, look at it, look over your toe. Is the arm able to make a complete parallel line to the shin? Maybe you can even catch the shin. There's a possibility. With the knee slightly off center once again. Okay? Because now you bend the elbow, flex the elbow, catch the wrist and move it across and let your fingers get its way or assist it as you're doing there, Kate. Correct? Assist it around. Keep it there, and now what I'd like you to do is to take your left, right hand, all right, don't, don't throw it yet, and catch the edge of the blanket. Sit up slightly. This is what I didn't show in my demonstration. Catch the right hand, Brucey. Sit higher. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. The hand pushes against the blanket. Bring yourself more upright. The outer edge as completely as you can. Let's put a block here, Kelly, to catch because your trunk is long. And now move the knee slightly towards the right as you descend the outer hip and roll the hip forward. And bring up the right hand to the clasp. Descend the Dandasana leg. The Dandasana leg cannot gum past the midline. And so it's possible that you've made a good ceiling of the arm. Let Lucia Brucey for a moment here. Loosen the, uh, the, uh, the strap. Come here, bend and, and come with me. No, bend this elbow. Now smooth inhalation and smooth exhalation. Then so you come around like that. Now how's that right now? That's better. Okay. Now throw the other arm around. Mm -hmm. You can reach. Miracle. Now maybe the knee is not quite in alignment, but you're, you're getting that way, and I'm moving you in the position. Inhale the breath, and exhale, unwind back to the front. Stretch the leg out, Dandasana. Sometimes it takes four hands. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, the left leg, come up. Come in, you're getting used to your hands and the feet placement. Hands, legs, arms, they're the commendrias, they're motor nerves, they're limbs of action. Your skin is more, has sensory nerves, sending these signals back to the brain. So when we move the body, we now have to have some sense of what's happening in the skin, the skin of the shin. The skin of the shin should have almost an upright lift, as I said, and not just downward heaviness. So have this upright lift. Here the skin of this thigh here should increasingly move down to the outside of the hip and the outer hip descending. Is the front leg so extended, even though you're up on the blankets, except if you're up two or three, but if you're low blanket, the back of the knee should come more increasingly close to the floor. 
Okay? So you're aware of the limbs and you're aware of more subtle actions in your own body. Now cross the knee over, recline back, take the hand. So it becomes very familiar what the back arm is doing, what the front arm is doing. You're stroking the cloth, but the skin is also turning across as you lift up and come down, go down, go low down in this malasan position. And when you finally plant the buttock and then readjust the foot, once you readjust the foot, your arm as it extends out to the side should now bring the knee more upright. The arm that is straight, parallel to the left leg, the knee should be more upright. And Kelly, if you have difficulty, maybe put a second blanket as you go down. Let's see, because you have a very long trunk. Okay. Now bend the elbow. Bend the elbow and find a free place, uh, uh, sorry, a purchase for the back of the wrist, the fingers as it moves along. You may have to help it. But now before you go anywhere, with the hand waiting, it's waiting for you. First take on an exhalation the right hand, left hand at the edge of the blanket and turn yourself and now bring the knee more to the vertical position. It will change again, but return more and more to the vertical line. Now the abdomen has an inward movement. On exhalation, rely on the malasana ankle hinge and take the arm back out front and give a momentous uh, 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 um, throwing of the arm. Okay, we're stationed first at the blanket to get yourself upright, and now we have the arm position. Roll the foot from the outside in. So you're striving now to increase the ability to decrease the gap in the body, the gap between the body and the leg. So it may be you have to come low down and get this turning and now rotate, now rotate. Now rotate and see what happens here if there's a little less gap. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you strive, you, in fact, you, you take your trunk almost close to the leg and the leg back towards the trunk. But we are striving all the while to descend from the outer knee, the skin towards the outer hip. Turn the abdomen, turn the trunk. Look out over the extended right foot. And now exhale and turn the head to look towards the back shoulder. Now before you exit the pose, I'd like you to bring the head to a level position, looking out directly towards that left, the light on life wall, and bring yourself upright. So the head and the heart are in alignment. So bhakti is your center of devotion. So keep the head lifted, the chest lifted, and now as you unwind yourself, now let loose the back hand and come back to face the front head heart and alignment. Dandasana.